shit. That was an impressive one. Let's go. Yeah, that song's a fucking banger. Alrighty, welcome to the Weasley Update. I am Aiden Weiss, I am ripped, and I am ready to fucking ramble. We are on Season 2, Episode 5, and it is Tuesday, September 29th. And I'm here again with Ryder Weiss and Parker Weiss. Repping the fucking Weiss Media thing, I'm glad that fit you as well as it did. That's awesome. And honestly, it makes really me soft. like, that was like a realization, because that's the same size as the one I wear. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, maybe him. Either you're buffer than I realized, or I'm not as buff. What the hell? Yeah, go ahead. I don't... See, that's right. Well, whatever. Dude. Oh, yeah, well, again, like we just watched that trailer again, I have to address the Batman trailer because yes, um, I have not had a chance to ramble about it on here, and I have so many opinions about it. First, the choice of music was excellent. Right. Yes. Set the tone well. With Nirvana? Yeah, seriously. For sure. One, also have to acknowledge only like 25% of it has been filmed. Which makes sense because a lot of the footage was on like the same set. You know what I mean? Like the murder scene and then him yeah, and Catwoman the there vibe. later. Like, we didn't see much like, like story exactly. movement. It was pretty much just all bad. The, the, the cathedral and scene and, and then he goes back yep. there later. Which makes sense because obviously they don't shoot that shit in order. Yeah. Um, but two... At first, I really did not like the suit. Not, okay, I didn't feel that strongly about it, but when they did the costume test, I was like, okay, mm-hmm. that's all right. But then set pictures came out right after that of the dude on the, on the stunt bike, and it looked pretty pretty weird. One, he had like weird like a bug eye lenses over words because he was riding a motorcycle and it was raining. Um, and two, su- stunt suits are generally cheaper and like, you know, make, cause they're not going to be shown on cameras in as much detail. And also they have to be able to take a beating. Yeah. So they're usually built out of like more protective and also cheaper yeah. material. And they make more of them yeah. most likely, but goddamn dude, when I saw those set pictures, I was like, that suit is really fucking weird. It, yeah, yeah. Really mediocre. It didn't seem like anything that was like crazy terrible, but it did not. Yeah. It was nothing. It was, you know, you know what threw well. it off? The gauntlets, like those weird, like silver things. And I get those are like, um, sort of like, you know, like shurikens, like throwing darts. But fuck, that threw it off so hard for me. But uh, in the trailer, like, it looked incredible. Yeah. I think it's, like, one of the best looking, at least, like, in that trailer, one of the best looking bat suits ever. And, and, of course, he's got the perfect jawline for that, dude. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It was more um, demeaning than I thought it would be. Like, it, yeah, it was really scary. looks like he will kick your ass. Dude, like, the way he just, like, comes in in that first scene, too. I love, um... I mean, you guys know how I feel growing up with the animated series. I'm a huge fan of the gray suit yeah. mm-hmm. with, like, black detailing. And I was actually just watching a video I didn't finish of this dude um, ranking live-action bat suits. And I'm, I'm also, like, believe it or not, a big fan of the yellow symbol. You yeah. know, like the yeah, yellow emblem. Sure. Uh, Gives that more, like, OG feel. Th- not, not to say it that, like, the black suits. Out more. Yeah, absolutely. And it's almost like... Like, I, it makes sense why they wouldn't do it anymore, but um, it's pretty iconic. Like, in the newer comics, instead of it being, like, a circle emblem, the Bat logo just has, like, a thin yellow outline, mm-hmm. which I thought was a really good way to uh, to update that. And, again, not to say that, like, the, the other movie suits aren't bad, or are bad, because the Michael Keaton suit in both movies is awesome. awesome. Yes. And it uses the yellow symbol super well. Especially, it just works so much better on, like, the all-black suit, I think. Dude, plain as that suit in Arkham Knight is so dope. But, um, that suit, like the Batman Begins one, suffers from the not being able to turn the head. I mean, the first oh. trailer of for Batman 89, it's literally like a helicopter spotlight closing in on him. And he has to turn his whole body around. <laughs> and they, stiff. Yeah, and they even stiff. acknowledged that in The Dark Knight. Like, when he went to Lucius Fox about the new suit and was describing functions of it, Lucius said, like, oh, you want to be able to turn your head, huh? Um, and again, the, I honestly thought the Batman Begins suit was pretty good. Yeah. But, uh, like, I go back and forth about the Dark Knight suit because I think it's really cool and it's, like, perfect for what it is, but I almost feel like he wasn't necessarily bigger in Batman Begins, but the suit, like, 
filled him in more. Whereas, yeah. I, I don't know, he almost looked too scrawny in the other ones. Uh, yeah, that's... I was never a big fan. Like, I felt like he was a good actor to play Batman. I Excellent. Mean, I never felt like he had that, like, demeaning body type as I, like, expected. No, but he got too big. Because the first... The movie he did before Batman Begins, it's called The the Machinist or something, yeah. and he's insanely skinny. There's a really famous, like, scene of... It, he looks like a dinosaur. Like, he's got, like, no neck. You can see all his ribs. Mm. Yeah. So he had to gain all this weight super quickly to beat Batman, and he got too big to fit into the suit, and they had to delay production a little bit so that he could, like, trim down. Ah. Um, but I... I know it would have cost money, but... I, I think, like, the Ben Affleck body type... What I liked about his Batman is it's just this hulking figure. Mm-hmm. He and seemed it, like he could really pummel you into the ground. Yeah, like dude. And it, it, the, again, that goes back to, like, my love for the animated series. With the gray suit, and he's just, like, I mean, this all big massive. fucking dude. Yeah, the Arkham games. Oh, my God. Those games are just so awesome. I, right. I have high hopes for Suicide Squad. I don't Squad. think I ever played any of them all the way through, because I was... Never, like, I mean, I was, Super like, terrible at video games. And I still am. Um, and those are hard sometimes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I they're tried. really hard. And they're cool. Did you ever beat Jedi? Fallen Order? Did either no, of you? No, I only made it to the second oh, planet. Oh, it's, that game gets pretty hard. With the spiders. And that game, left. that game's really cool. No, I, I don't know what I mean, happened. I'll, I'll like, continue at some point. I stopped playing video games for a while. So and that was, like, Me too. it was right after, like, I got that game is when I just kind of, like, slowly... Kind of declined playing video games. You it's see, when so I fun. started playing that game, <coughs> that was when I started getting Back into video in. games a lot. Because I don't usually, like, I barely ever have time for video games. Dude, but Fortnite I, kicked yeah. it off for me. Oh, really? I mean, you. I mean, yeah. yeah I, I, I've, I, played, I I've played about as many video games as, like, anyone else in this household. Well, I, like, played, I played that. I finished that. Um, Paris of the Caribbean game and oh my god that's fun four days maybe five days dude Epic Mickey was so fun I finished when it that came out, in dude. like five see days I just play games like I play games I was getting more one world done in a day you guys or play just a, a higher hours. variety of games I, yeah for I play sure. games like like I play the same games as you guys like but I'm not as like dedicated to finishing that story like I never <sighs> finished Kingdom Hearts Disney I mean, made never the close. coolest games I, like even if they were crappy they were <coughs> also they were just so much fun to play like uh, that, that one on the week like our heads like yeah. we, that Tron we game. have this oh. okay Tron game slapped you cannot even say that that's a bad game we Freaking just love it dude I, you know it was a an underrated game on the Tron game because you remember it was like yeah. all the different yeah. awesome. games. The, the Scooby, Scooby Ball, ball dude. Yeah. Yes. That, that was so, so oh sick. God, like destroying lit. the platform. I really wanted to see that in the newer Tron movie. Like, in I know, dude. I was really kind of like... Even even if it was like, like, um, like it. just in the, in the background or something. Like when they have that whole stage. You know what's really cool that I watched in the behind the scenes thing for that movie? Hmm. Before they even filmed it, they're at the Comic Con panel announcing... Every, basically every detail. They showed this little, uh, this trailer that now, like, has nothing to do with the story, but I remember Dad showing it a very it to just me. visual, like... Yeah, it's br- and it sort of set the stage because it's, it's basically there. some random dude, and, like, it's so early that Clue, they had different colors and shit, like, different, roughly different designs, but basically some dude is running and he's getting... You know, they get into light bike battle and all this shit, and then it pops out. And he's like, it's just a game, blah, blah, blah. And then he takes his helmet off, and it's Jeff Bridges, the young Jeff Bridges. And everyone is like, oh, what is this? And then it pans over, and it's old Jeff Bridges, like, wa- looking down, watching that happen. Um, so I, I remember when Dad showed me that, we were like, what are they doing? But in that behind-the-scenes thing where they showed that at Comic-Con and, like, are announcing everyone, or, you know, the whole cast and shit, they were like, yeah, this might not make it into the movie, but we're going to put some words up on the on the screen, and we have a bunch of microphones in the audience and uh, just yell the words and hopefully that'll make it into the final cut. And so in the final cut of the movie, when they're in the light bike or the uh, disc wars, that's the Comic Con panel going Disc yeah. Wars Disc oh, Wars no and wow. Yeah, and Rinsler. That's so Rinsler. Cool. So like dude that's especially because really cool. they had no context of what Rinsler was going to be. Yeah. No, you know they were just I mean? saying it and they were like, all right, yeah. That's, that's awesome. so, so cool. That's a really cool way to like 
see your friends be able to look back and be like, wait a damn minute, dude. I didn't you know, know this. So, so the all of the CG besides a lot of the Jeff Bridges stuff. Uh, holds up like impeccably. Um, and see, that's just because the Jeff Brit- That's oh, for that time there was very little to none, like yeah, de aging, and, yeah. so, and Disney's perfected that. Now. Oh, Disney yeah. and Marvel, like they've and all I, I got they that did down. Pretty good job with it. To it. a T. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, and I that's that. just there the technology. Some, that like, I mean, I think it was just, some of the kids, like the I think the only thing that was really was, weird yeah. was Ben's cheeks. Well, I, I looking at his glasses was... made me. I was like, that doesn't. God, work, that right. movie's but awesome. But they yeah, did yeah, really, like in a uh, Endgame, like looking ba- like when they go dude, to get young more Ant-Man? serum, like dude, young Ant Man. What the fuck, oh, yeah. young Michael Douglas looks incredible. And even in the first Ant Man, young Michael Douglas looked crazy good. Incredible. And so, like, looking back on it, I can, <sighs> I remember being amazed by this, but, like, I can still look back and be like, damn, that's actually, like... And, like, the the story, cool the soundtrack, movie. obviously, like, soundtrack Tron story. Legacy is in, you know, I, I'm biased because of how much I fucking love that movie and just the franchise, but, like, that is so close to one of the most perfect sequels ever. Because, like, that's arguably... That's probably one of the only franchises I mean, where the that sequel Toy Story is definitively 2, like, better. You put that Toy Story two in like those like that's where yeah. I kind of place that because you can look at like a Tron it it'll kind of be dependent on this next one like and I think I have that high hopes. will be badass. I what, really you think know, that, that can. I love be Jared really Leto. Good. And why I, why I have high hopes is because I read that the dude who's writing and directing it like really campaigned hard to do it. Like Disney initially so was reluctant. Like good. yeah, exactly. He was like so passionate about it that he like put everything into his pitch. Is this what he, good. is this going to be the same thing like in Suicide Squad where he does a bunch of crazy no, stuff? No, hopefully not. To like fit well, the part. He no, Almost. because Joker was No, crazy, a lot of that like, was fake too. Um, like, he definitely sent gifts to people, but, like, the butt plugs and dead rats and shit, like, Margot Robbie and other cast members debunked that. And even then, the gifts that he did send weren't just made by him, it was him and his, like, whole publicity team and, like, stylists and shit. But also, getting into character, he was Joker. Joker's already an insane Jared Leto's an awesome actor. Yeah. That's for sure. And, um, yeah, you know, it was really funny, though, I didn't realize how many people dislike him until they announced... Tron Aries with Jared Leto and it, all the memes I was seeing were like when I read there's a new Tron and it's someone super pumped and then when I read Jared Leto's attached and they're like barfing oh I it's I feel like one I don't feel like I've seen him in a really a lot of stuff the most recent thing is him as Joker and I feel like we didn't see him that much as Joker and so I feel like no shit like the only thing well, I know him from is 30 so. seconds to Mars and Oh yeah, and and that, well that's reason songs like the kill and like seeing him perform live is just like oh, how I can know. you hate him? And he also looks like Jesus when he's performing. I know. There's one where he literally like splits is walking the crowd through the crowd. Like, yeah. this man is <laughs> Jesus. Like the long hair and beard. Yeah, he. I mean, he's an Oscar winner. Oh yeah, that, that definitely means something. Um, yeah, I. I'm not gonna lie. I'm excited for Morbius too. Yeah, I, I thought that, sure that when I saw the trailer, I was definitely. Because the whole, pr- when they announced it, I was like, no, that sounds like it's going to be garbage. But I'm, uh, I'm into where it's going, especially the Michael Keaton cameo in the see, trailer. Yeah. Uh, the I little Sinister Michael Six? Yeah, I would I love to really see that. And I really, all, oh, I, I all I want is to see Venom just go in and try and kick some Dude, spidey ass. I, I can't believe Michael Keaton's playing Batman again. I can't That's either. insane. That is, I can't believe he's old. I actually, I actually old read something. Fifty um, six. Let's see. I don't know. Good question. I actually read something about how they're also they also are approaching Christian Bale, George Clooney, Val Kilmer, and one big surprise cameo. Sixty nine. Wow. So he wow, is okay. old. Old. What about Samuel L. Jackson? So I'm guessing sixty three. He's in his seventies. Seventy four. I'm gonna say seventy two. Actually, yeah, 70, 70, I'm going to stick with 74. Man, he doesn't look that he old, He is 71. Damn. I don't, oh, Samuel L. Jackson, he doesn't look that old, but he looks like a snapping turtle. Oh, I love him, though. 
Yeah, he's... Oh, my God. He's just one of my favorite, and he's also hilarious. Nick Fury show? What? Oh, yeah, and it's him. It's a surprise. A, it is him. But a, oh, what, what's the Star Wars quote? It's like, a surprise, but a welcome one. To the show. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, no, Mom was like, it might be a white uh, Nick Fury, and then I yeah, looked it I up, looked and I was like, no, it's not. It's not. I would have been like, down for that, though. I just... I, Samuel that one Jackson cool. is alive and he is moving. That's what yeah, but like to me. they're they're exploring all the multiverse. It would be cool to do the OG version of Nick. Fury. Yeah, yes, it would. I can't I remember also, who, I just who she loved. said was gonna do it, but I, I that's don't remember. What me up. But I I just love Samuel Jackson so much, and I also grew up with him doing that. Other than playing games like Ultimate Alliance, like that's oh, I kind of yeah. grew up seeing freaking sure. Samuel Jackson as my. Uh, Nick Fury, so... Yeah, you know, I definitely... Do have this He's definitely too. been Nick Fury for more of my my life. Uh, but I, like, yeah. as a kid, I was just exposed to a lot of fucking well, yeah, white has, Sergeant Nick yeah, Fury. Yeah, but When did the first Avengers come out? Cause that, 2013, 12. Well, no, he, he started... He, they made him black in the Ultimate Comics, and it's actually funny. He walked by a comic store. And saw it. Not only did they make him black, they drew Samuel L. Jackson, and he <laughs> he saw it and was like, "But you, motherfucker, that's me." You also see, <laughs> uh, you also see him in Iron Man Two. Oh, he yeah, he yeah, cameoed yeah. in the. Well, he had a post credit scene in the first Iron Man, like, and and Captain that was two thousand eight. And in Captain America, two thousand eight. No, that was the he, he first cameo. Movie. Or, yeah, he had a cameo in the original Iron Man in, in a post credit scene in like. 2008, 2008. First, first Marvel movie to then start. Then 2010, oh, yeah. Marvel dropped Iron Man 2 and Captain America. And he was in And 2011, those. had Thor. He was not in that, but no. Coulson was He's in probably that. been in more He's been in Marvel movies lot. than anyone else. I mean, right? uh, you're probably... R- yeah, well, I don't know about later ones, because he was really just in a lot of the what, We only ones. saw him in, like, Captain Marvel... We, did we see him Spider-Man, in Infinity War? He's in Spider-Man Far From Home. He yeah, was in Spider-Man a post credit scene in Infinity War. Infinity War. Endgame? No. Yes. Not, he, yes he, he was at the cabin. Endgame. Endgame. And then what? I, I, I do not think he beats he's, Robert Downey Jr. He's in, I feel like he's in Homecoming. I think he will beat he is Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. Yeah. I think he will beat Robert Downey Jr. No, but wait. Is he? he? has. I think I don't so. think yes, he is. Yes, he is. When? I sw- in in, ho- in f- homecoming? Yeah. Oh, I was thinking far from home. Yeah. yeah no, no, I don't think in most. Of- I don't. I don't think he's in homecoming. Mm. No, he isn't. Yeah. No. He yeah. Definitely isn't. I'd actually be interested in knowing who it is. If I had to guess, it wasn't really him. It was an alien. I guess it'd make more. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was still Samuel. Jackson. That's, that was I, wow. I guess it would make the most sense for it to be. I think it's RJ. Iron Man. I think it's RDJ. But at the same time, but like, I th- I think just because we still it, have him, still have Nick Fury, I think in these he next could few, be. he I think he's gone. Well, here, but here's I don't the think thing: though, Chris yet. Evans, Robert Downey Jr., and Chris Hemsworth all got trilogies, so they're all equal on that front. But Iron Man was also in the third Captain America. Yeah, and Thor wasn't, and. And Iron then, Man's been in every Avengers movie. You haven't seen Captain America cameo I th- in I think any other I one. I think that's... Li- well, he had a cameo in The Dark World when Loki impersonated him. I, I mean, if you're going to yeah, count the, the Nick Fury cameo for He had a little cameo in... I in think it's Homecoming, Homecoming. too, yeah. Yeah, so... But also Iron Man was in Homecoming. He was. But I for think, I think where he has him beat is... Civil War, because that's the third installment of the Chris Evans one, and it's got him Yeah, in it. so, I, so I think RDJ is ahead. On top of his trilogy, and on top of the Avengers movies, he's also in one of the Captain America movies. Yep. So I do think Robert Downey Jr. is probably in front, and then I think it's probably, probably Chris, Chris Evans, Evans and, and then... Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, but I think Nick Fury or Samuel L. Jackson will pass him at some point That's i don't think it's by a large margin i think it's probably by like three movies so, so the nick fear is probably gonna be like four or five on that list. oh yeah he's mm-hmm. he's probably right up there right because like who else has been in who else has done a ton scarlett of johansson not the guardians no yeah. scarlett johansson though yeah but she was really only in avengers she was in the original in the last iron man two. So she doesn't have no, her she trilogy hasn't come out yet she was in iron man 2 what about the boxing scene i thought that's in the that's in iron man 2 Oh, well then Iron she Man was two, in Iron three. Man 2, Captain America 2, 
and Captain America Civil War, then the... F- and Iron Man 3. Then the four Avengers movies. She was not in Iron Man 3. I swear she was in Iron Man No, she was not. Because Iron- then she's not close. Um, but not, she will be in her own movie. I don't think they're doing don't. a trilogy, though. I do not care about that. No, movie. I mean, like, she doesn't I looked at I, I Looking at that trailer, I, I thought, uh... I, I think it looks I good. don't think she needs yeah. her own movie. I'll go see it. Well, they've planned on having her own movie for a long time. I know, I just... Since, like, the first Avengers came out... They were talking about that. Also, just like stop yeah, caring about they her just, after she They died. just never pushed it forward. Yep. Because there was not that confidence that a female hero could. No, but I also yeah. don't the think there's bucks. that much popularity surrounded by her. I don't think she was like this big like oh, let's go watch a Black Widow yeah, movie. I, okay, like I don't I'll think there's any yeah. focus on I, her. I don't think as it's a for any reason that she's a girl. But you're right. I think it's I by think she wasn't a popular. If character. like you just. If these movies didn't come out, or if they were getting rebooted, and you asked me to predict who would be getting solo movies, Black Widow would not be one. That, no, she wouldn't that be would in my guess. top three. Because I would literally, like, I guess I'm not that familiar with her mythos, but I don't feel like she's got we as haven't rich explored a, enough a mythos about her. No. as other like female characters. No. You know, all I want to know is Rogue. Best. What happened in Give Budapest? Give me Rogue. I just want like a badass Rogue because she's. I love Anna Paquin, but. In all the source material in the X Men show I grew up on, she's a flying super strength, oh, fucking badass, that, yeah. and it's because she she did she, she gets her powers from Captain Marvel. Nothing in I know the X Men movies, and then she got her. And that's why it's so life. disappointing. And that's but there are rumors she'll be in the, there are rumors uh, she'll be in Captain Marvel too, which would suggest they are going for the storyline mm-hmm. where she. Because in, in the comics, she, like, sucked Captain Marvel's powers. But, Good. like, Get didn't rid kill of her, Marvel. and she was in a coma. Captain Marvel's fine. I'm not a Brie Larson fan, but no, I'm not I, fan I thought that movie was fucking mediocre. pretty decent. I thought it was mediocre. Yeah, I didn't feel like it It was any better than uh, a bunch of installments, but no. I didn't feel like it was worse. Like, it's no. certainly better than, like, Iron Man 3 or The Dark World. See, but you said Guardians 2 earlier, and I severely disagree oh, with that. Oh, I love that movie. Guardians has all, so always keeps, like, this light-hearted yeah, energy. But I, also, I, the second one yeah, is but awesome. I think Thor is better than Guardians 2. It also has light-hearted energy. Excellent but, fucking see, soundtrack. See, but I... Okay, you can't... Good compare. Loki? The, the, second sound, the second one's soundtrack is amazing. Yeah, it's good, but not in the same way. You know I like no, orchestral but it, stuff. No, it's a way to just like... I hmm. really, really love the sort, the Thor soundtrack. The setting is awesome. Going to Jodenheim and fighting all the frost giants. It's got with cool a, scenes. Dude, it's just so awesome to see Loki and Thor fighting alongside each other. And I get that you see that in Ragnarok, but not in the same capacity. Because like them, him like throwing knives around on Jodenheim. Him and being like actually badass. Him each being other on like, brothers, as I brothers. I think Thor Ragnarok is... I think the original Thor... Definitely versus... one of my favorite Marvel movies. Yes. Yeah. I don't... I mean... I think Ragnarok's like the plushy Dude, version of the characters. when fucking... When goddamn... So yeah, that's a good way of putting it. When goddamn uh, Loki, like... Like, almost turns into a frost giant. That's in awesome. the fucking... Um, uh, like trophy room and mm-hmm. he has that whole like confrontation with Odin and he's screaming at... Dude, that, that in my opinion is like one of the... the best written scenes in any Marvel movie. Oh, yeah. I just still, God, like... damn, that movie's cool. I, in my... Like, I obviously have... I, I don't listen to orchestral stuff, so the Thor soundtrack never really appealed to me as Dude, much as things Sif like and 80s the Warriors and, 3? I just... I really was just, like... I would way rather listen, like, bop through Disneyland listening to some, like, Guardians 2 vibes than yeah, listening I, to the I, soundtrack I, of I'll tell you Thor. what, though. Thor is... A huge part of what got me into. I, mean, I it, it's a good soundtrack. Almost I'm just not any into the orchestral, orchestral song. Is better than your stupid rap music. I'm not talking. No, about, he I'm was talking, talking about, about the Guardians two soundtrack. Like, Guardians two. Because like, saying. what other soundtracks? Because Guardians is Guardians aside, because those are more, um, like pop culture hits than orchestral think, stuff. What other soundtracks stand out to you? I think the Ragnarok Infinity soundtrack Man. fit. Yeah. So well. So well with, with the like synthy, the theme, yeah. like eighties. What'd you say? I said Infinity War. Infinity War has a See, pretty the good end soundtrack. When it just says Avengers Infinity War, and you just got that like, boom, I was. Boom, boom. Yeah. That that was literally the same. Well, where I you, could just feel tears. You know what's even just better? Flow. Is, like is the, the one the fucking Thanos sits down and like the violins and shit, 
And that motif, like, carries over. There's a song called um, I'm Not Okay or, like, Not Okay or something. And it's what plays after they kill Thanos. And it's, like, you know, yeah. Thor's walking out. Right. And it's, like, blurring. And it's, like, boom, boom. You know, just so fucking... And See, you know who did that? Who? The dude who did the Van Helsing soundtrack. Silverstein? So uh, yeah, uh, uh, Al- Alan, Alan Silverstein. Sil- something Silvestri like that. or something? Some, yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I was really glad because he Helsing. did the He's first really Avengers, awesome. but Danny Elfman did the second one. Yeah. No way. I didn't care for yeah. the second one. Danny Elfman no, not, suggested you know, I love Danny Elfman, Elfman, Elfman as but as well. not a great soundtrack. Nope. But also, I mean, Endgame's end game soundtrack. Same with Justice it. League. Justice League had a weak soundtrack, yeah. and, and he did that. Oh, really? Yeah, you know, this was actually... I think he's his music stands out the best in movies like Nightmare Before Christmas, Dude, Sleepy Hollow, Night, the Sleepy Hollow soundtrack. In those nostalgic, so there's a lot of nostalgic Beetle movies juice. that we see. Dude, Beetlejuice. Dina, Dina. Like those kinds of so movies, unique. his music for those kinds it's of music quirky. fits the I just don't see him as so like well a superhero. Dude, the weird. Batman theme. They're yeah. all such That's the definitive weird Batman things. theme. Yeah. But also, Endgame, when Iron Man dies, listening to that. Oh, the the real hero. Yeah, like, bruh. Yeah, that is so a good. Tear you so know, it's good. another. You know, it's another really hard one to hmm. listen to. It gets me every time. It's called. Uh, I'm blanking on it, but it's whatever Sam, uh, uh, Bucky says to Sam, like "Go ahead." That's what it is. You know, yes. when he's they see old Steve on the bench, and he's like, "Go ahead." I didn't like That's that. what it's called, and it's uh, it's just that song. And what's so good about it is it like plays as soon as. B- um, Sam gets the shield. It plays the OG Captain America theme from the first movie. Boom, 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 boom. God, that he did that one too. Alan Silvestri or whatever it is. He's done like a ton of pop culture hits like that. I feel like. Okay, but also the final dance between uh, Captain America and Peggy. Dude, just that's. You know, Disneyland played that at the end of a World of Color. They no. They literally like they played that as you could just see. You know, the little fountains. Oh. As, the... Like people were leaving and the, the fountains it's, it's were barely been, going. What's it called? It's like it's been a long, long. A long, time. long time. Yeah, and they played that, and people were like, "God damn it, dude! That's Disney. What, what, Disney what out of all companies, like knows how to just like. Whoa. They, yeah. Knows how like to get your feelings. What I thought it was. Okay. Yeah, they know how to just like hit you right in the sweet spot. Up. Who did yeah. the music for that? Michael Giacchino. He also did the Incredibles, and he's doing the Batman. See, um, I'm super pumped. Fun question about the Batman. Theme. What? I'm gonna give you four Pixar movies. You have to take one out. Okay. Monsters Inc. Incredibles. Uh huh. Finding Nemo. Toy Story. Toy Story. Thank you. I hate the first Toy Story. I don't hate it. I used to enjoy like, it, but I can't. Watch compared it to Nemo, Monsters, and what was the Nowhere other one? Nowhere near. Incredibles. Yeah, no way. No fucking way. When See, I big Toy Story. I love Toy Story movie. three and Toy Story two. I Toy love. Story. I love the first Toy Story. I don't. I. I literally. I look back at it, and it's the hard for me to watch them I link unsynchronized. Them I, I don't that. care. Like They're that toys. movie's it's still old. so entertaining. Some toys of the best Buzz content. Oh, definitely toys, the best toys who do blink don't blink at the same time. Like, I don't know if you know. One of my favorite yeah. toys. Sto- it's honestly more. I realistic. just don't like that. One of my favorite Toy Story scenes ever is in that. And yeah. it's when everyone's like really impressed I just by like, Buzz. Two yeah. and three. Oh, impressive like, Brinks fan. Two and three are amazing. What? Four I what? enjoyed. I just didn't care for it that much. These are plastic. He can't fly. But and he's like, they're a trillion carbonic alloy, and I can fly. Mrs. Nasbin. <laughs> Mrs. Nasbin. Remember when he loses his arm? Oh, that is so funny. Up? Yeah, y- you know that. Talk about soundtracks. I think Randy Newman did that yep. when he like comes to the realization he is a toy. What? It's called um, it's called I will go sailing no more. Yeah, it's so good. You know what else has one of the best suites I think in music? You, you, I'm probably gonna butcher what this is, but a suite is basically like for a movie like. All the motifs yeah. put together. Yep. Um, the Bugs Life Suite. Holy fuck, yes. dude! Amazing. 
I mean, that's got such a good Looks soundtrack. Like Nemo. Underrated movie. Cra- I know, dude. Oh, no, 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 no. Brother Bear. I think I've got... 39% Rotten Tomatoes. What? Brother Bear has a 39% Rotten Tomatoes. You know, and see, the movie that I would switch that out with yeah. is Black Cauldron. Black Cauldron has like a 57. Black Cauldron is a god awful Yeah, movie. I can't even remember that movie. Brother Bear is fucking awesome. Brother Bear's amazing. I love Brother Bear. In the Bear. music... Except Phil Collins, Phil Collins I know. So on good. my way. Tarzan. Oh my god. I know. The Tarzan soundtrack is one of the best. Tarzan Strangers like me. Ever. So good. You, uh-huh. It's unmatched. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah. you can Wait, compare that and the Lion King. And that Ag- is again, it. oh my god. I know. The Lion sound. Oh my god. The Lion King soundtrack is so incredible. Incredible. I mean, I, I could spend this whole podcast sucking on Hans Zimmer's dick because he's, he's just Incre- like. He's done so much. And especially like when it comes to our childhood. Like everything that we love, we can be like, "Well, what's the soundtrack?" And it's it's, seriously like, dude, even the Batman theme. You know, I've never been a Christian Bale hater, but I I did when I was watching Batman Begins today. I did think like, you know what? Maybe I've been too harsh on this guy. Like, he really, because like it's not that I've been a hater. It's that I've always wanted a a Batman that was closer to the animated series one. I mean, and that was yeah, exactly. Like bias towards that. And the Dark Knight just didn't have that, but it was like almost perfect at what it was, being the grounded, gritty. I mean, yeah, it wasn't meant. It's not like trying to like they they realize what like his body type there and they used it well i felt like they didn't like try and reach yeah with what his abilities were like there he's not out here just and the tech was all good like, you know what's so funny too is uh i guess there was no plan for the batmobile to ever be in it which oh. is crazy to me because it plays like such a big role in that fucking movie yeah. i mean there's like a, a seven minute car chase scene in that thing, plus the scene where he's with Lucius, like, actually trying it out. Um, but yeah, I guess the executives were like, dude, like, we've been granting you a lot of liberty with this character, like, but this wouldn't be a, a Batman movie to us. They didn't, like, tell him he had to put it in it, but they were like, the, our, our people, hearts wouldn't be in it if there wasn't a Batman com- Diehard comic book people would... Not yeah, be dude. the most in favor of this movie. Dude, again, Burton's fucking Batmobile. So cool. Burton is just so... His style is just so distinct. Yeah, and see, I love Burton, but also, he made that new Dumbo movie, and that new I Dumbo movie it. is horrible. I did not see it, but he not also right. made it Sleepy Hollow. It was horrible. It's just, it, you're thinking of Dumbo, and it's a very dark take well he does dark stuff. you know bill burr said something about dumbo. that that he took like his really young daughter to go see that thinking it was gonna be he was like it's dumbo yeah you know? it's did, dumbo can't be did. that bad and then he made it like he did nightmare before really christmas dark. there's gonna be it's not gonna be the Except brightest you look movie. at nightmare before yeah that's christmas. why i was so confused it's, he did he nightmare before christmas is really not incredibly dark it's it's a Halloween movie. Nightmare Before he, Christmas. He didn't even Corpse direct Bride, that. Sleepy Hollow. Tim Burton did not direct Nightmare Before Christmas. No, he produced it. Yeah. But it's still definitely like the it's, most Tim Burton movie ever. Yeah. But also like that he that's not Sleepy a super Hollow. dark movie. Yeah. And then he he also did Corpse Bride. Yeah. See, but those are all like Halloween Coraline. movies. You don't think of these movies and be like, you know what, I'm gonna watch this Christmas time that's or why Danny Elfman February did like fucking Corpse. These are all times like Henry you watch Stella. these during Halloween. You watch these in September and October, and that's it. I I want you, you guys to not watch them anywhere on else, anytime else. What I I didn't like it at first, but I think it's really good. It was a fan cast for Joker. Do you guys know who Javier Bardem is? Well, I Sounds actually familiar. I think we talked about this privately, but yeah, he he's would be he plays awesome. Captain Salazar. In the oh, last pirates, the, last pirates. Okay. the the picture of this person used to was really good because it was like a he was a Bond villain and he had like bleached eyebrows so it looked like I, mean, I saw it looked like what did we could kind of get yes yeah, like a, a bleached, 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 bleached hair um I think that would be really good and the same post had Rami Malek as a fan cast um, I don't I I, I totally can't. see that I don't think. It's, I don't like his voice. Because, like, I could see him, oh, yeah. and he's also going to be a Bond villain, actually, in That's the newest true. one. I could I could totally see, like, him and Robert Pattinson sparring, because they're both, like, young 
recognized actors. See, but he always, Raymond Mellick always looks like he's talking, like he's trying to be Freddie Mercury. Like, I don't think I've seen him not, like, talk. Maybe that's uh, why they cost him. Like, Maybe like, that's why they cast him. And, like, if that's just, like, him doing that for the sake of doing that, just to be more, like, I, I just can't look at that and be like, that's Joker when he's sitting here. Well, like, he's an actor, dude. Like, <laughs> it's just He's so... an actor. He's not going to be doing that shit when he's yeah, in the role. But my like personal it. fan cast is Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. By the way, it was long, but I just watched Zodiac the other night. Him and Robert Downey Jr. takes place in the 60s, early, late 60s, early 70s. And I didn't realize the Zodiac Killer was real because I'm a fucking dumbass. But it's about, do you guys know the Zodiac Killer? No. I only watched it because everyone was saying, like, the Riddler looks a lot like the Zodiac Killer, like in his mask. But the story of the Zodiac Killer is basically, you know, there were these, like, a couple unsolved murders and yada 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 and this dude just called the local police department and was like i would like to report a double murder and he just describes everything about it like i shot them here here and here and he's like and i also killed those two kids um blah 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 back last week and then he sent a bunch of letters to like the to like news agencies and like um uh you know the police with like weird he, it, it would be, like, a page that's, like, weird coding, like, a bunch of different symbols that they were trying to decipher, and it would also be a letter that was, like, to prove I did these murders, I'm gonna, uh, identify details only the police would know, like, this person was shot this many times, the bullet casings was this, yada, 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 and he would just, like, constantly send the police letters and be like, if you don't publish this, I'm gonna kill 12 more people, and, dude, just, like, and, yeah, it was a really tying people up, just stabbing them to death. Super, super crazy. And, um, yeah, and Jake Gyllenhaal is basically like a political cartoonist who's, you know, supposed to be sketch artisting. This, this dude is sketch artisting. And, uh, but I guess that dude went on because they never caught him. They, they thought they got close. And then the, this dude, like, who wasn't even a member of the press or the police was like putting it all together jumping between because it was all within like four jurisdictions too which made it really hard to to communicate yeah exactly and so he like went to all of these jurisdictions and put everything together and put out a book called Zodiac in like the 90s but this I mean this guy was calling his house the Zodiac killer was calling his house and just breathing like at, at some point in the movie spoiler alert some point in the movie, I don't know if this will really happen, but, like, he he picks up a hitchhiker and her baby, and they're driving for a little bit, and he's like, before I kill you, I'm going to throw your baby out the window. Yeah, I know, and I was just like, what in the fuck am I watching right now? I don't know. Craziness. And one... That's, never caught him. That's... So Their prime suspect died of a heart attack right before they could, like, go in and get him. Or, like, you know, like, have the questioning. Because this dude... Oh, it also had Mark Ruffalo in it. Oh, I he, he was, like, one of the... One didn't of the see cops. him much before Avengers, though, to be honest. Like, I didn't... Yeah, but now, in retrospect, I see him in all sorts of yep, shit. Yeah. yeah, but it's after you see them yeah. pop into the big eye, you're just like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. You're oh, yeah, this? totally. <laughs> and Mark Ruffalo, it's not to say that he wasn't big before Avengers. He just wasn't on my radar. No, but now he's on... He's everyone's what happened yeah. after knows I got into Hamilton, I was like, wait a minute, this person's in that. Ah, that I love person's in that, there. Dude. Hamilton is the only, like, Broadway musical that I can really get into. Besides you like Grease. I, okay, yeah. see, that's, I like the Grease movie. But Grease is fu- a goddamn classic. Yeah, that's a classic. That's why I like it. See, that, that I treat that like I treat Small World. I watch oh, yeah. it because it's a classic. I don't nope, enjoy Small me. World. But I I I go Greece. You watch because it's a classic, and not because you're I, entertained. I mean, it's inter- the music's entertaining. I don't really care for most of it. Sandy, I love you're that fucking movie. Kind of stupid. That movie's so goddamn oh, entertaining. Movie's so Every so scene, movie. dude. Yeah. Dude, I just I especially love that scene when I just like uh, towards the end where he first the sees stuff. Sandy with all of the when they fly all of the away dudes. in the car. No, I mean, before that, the racing and shit, whatever the fuck, oh. whatever they're doing. Oh, yeah, with That's the fucking, my least favorite with part. With your face. I thought that was funny. Or Sandra D. As a kid, that was definitely my favorite part. Yep. 
I remember watching that with me and kind of drawing, just, drawing myself in a T-bird jacket. Yeah. I just haven't watched it in a while. Also, my favorite scene was the fucking classic. Party, mainly because I was like, oh, underwear. Dude, like, the, yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> the fucking Danny Zuko's introduction, so good. It's like, Danny. And he goes over and he's got a cigarette in his mouth, hand on the wall, just spitting some game. Yeah. What's hilarious, too, is the guy who played Kaniki on Broadway was Danny Zuko. Oh, gosh, and yeah, they were just right. like, we got a... Uh, we got John Travolta, dude. Sorry. I I I I enjoy. I just haven't seen it in so long. Oh god! I, I you know what's so funny? One of my most distinct memories watching that was when this was Kylie's house in mom and dad's master bedroom, watching it with her mom, and like during the prom scene, she said something about like maybe you yeah, guys will go to this. prom together, and we were like, ew. <laughs> it's like yeah. Simba Nala. Yeah, I'm, exactly. That's so funny. Zazia. Betrothed. Dude, Betrothed. yeah, I don't know how I feel about this sequel. No, don't care. I don't care. Just like how I don't care for any other live-action Disney you movie. You need to just stop. Little Mermaid. Stop. Okay, get me, out. Just let me <laughs> I'll talk. give them all a chance. Yeah, you need to give them a chance before you rate them. I'm, I'm not, I'm not rating any system. of them. You're judging system. I just hear, hear what I, hear what I, here Ridiculous. is what I will say, though. On principle, I don't like it. Because if they had just done, like, Maleficent and, like, Aladdin, it would have been one thing. Or if they but they're just do doing Maleficent. everything. They're it, doing I, every class. Money hungry. That's... <laughs> and it's easy.